So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and run, it's right here, the Python idle GUI. And here it is. Just in our regular Python interpreter, we can type things once more like 3 plus 5 just gets interactively executed. So, um, one of the first things that it's good to know about, I think, is the uh, dir built-in function. And you can either call it with no arguments. Dir basically gives you all the names that are defined within the namespace that you give it. So if you don't give it any arguments, like I didn't give it any, I didn't give it a namespace, then it'll just give you the base one, the, the root namespace. Um, the underscore underscore built-ins is actually a module. Um, you can call dir on that also. Built-ins. I think you call it not, not in a string like that, but just by itself. You see there's a lot of things suddenly here. Um, these are all the built-in functions um, that just are automatically included when you start up Python. So dir is quite useful. Um, you can also import a module. I know there's a module called URL lib2, for example, which is good for making HTTP requests, like if you wanted to rip some information from Google or something like that. And we can call dir on URL lib2. And it gives us, now we see all the names defined in the, this array of strings. Um, so we have in this array of strings, we have different functions that are defined. We also have actually modules that are used by this module. And you can reference them kind of hierarchically. For example, bisect, that's not a function, that's actually a whole module. So we could type dir url lib2, that's where we were, dot bisect. There's going to be a bisect defined within url lib2. Now we get, here are the modules and the functions used within that bisect module. Now each of these modules is, a, uh, is found actually in the file system. We can go up to the file menu and say path browser. Most of the modules I've found have been in Python just the slash lib directory. There's a lot of packages here. I don't quite know how those work yet. And then there's just raw py files, Python files. So for example, here's the bisect.py. You can unfurl it some more and you can see here those same functions that you can see down here in this array, the insert left and right. Those are uh, sort of sprawled out in the path browser. Um, let's go into this bisect.py. We can actually open it up in a window, and here's just the raw, the Python code for these functions. So kind of nice to be able to look inside the code that you're using. And also if we go down here a lot further, url lib2.py, this is, uh, this is the one that we included that has all of these tools for getting HTTP requests and so forth. So, <clears throat> so that can be a very useful thing. Now, before I started exploring Python, I was sort of spoiled by another great language. Um, it's called Factor. You should go here and check it out if you're just sort of a language connoisseur. But uh, one thing that it features, which I like a lot and, and needed to get something like it in Python, is the ability to see the code in a function that you're using just by typing a command at the uh, prompt. So it's not always convenient to go all the way up to the file menu and go to the path browser and so forth. You know, what if you just want to say, well, hey, what's the code to this function? You know, just right there in the interpreter. And so I found a way to do that. Right now, the way it works is I can say, like, I have defined a function called C. Oh, well, actually, it's not, it's not defined in this instance of, uh, of Python. But 
Um, in any case, it's based on the inspect module, which we can run dir on inspect and see what's there. There's a lot of things here. Um, but among them, get get source, get source lines, get source. I forget exactly which ones are are useful in which way, but if we say get source, uh, sorry, I, I have to specify the module first. Inspect is the module that I have imported dot get source. Now you see we need an object which will be um, the name of a function. Let's say we want to get we'll be kind of recursive here and we'll say inspect.getSource inspect.getSource see what that gives us yeah you see it gives us a string which looks kinda of nasty um, we could have printed that here's another cool thing about Python I can say print this underscore just refers to the value of the last thing that was piped into the interpreter so now that I say print now I get it all nice and formatted so get source is the function for us for just getting the code of whatever we're wanting to use or see how it works. So what I've done, and let me get out of idle here since it's not running right now, I have defined idle.bat, which actually um, calls idle with a parameter that allows a startup script to run that automatically defines the C function that wasn't working before. And I can say like let's say import um, we'll say import inspect again and we'll say c inspect dot uh, get source so c is just defined to uh, and I, I have another batch file here it's a little ghetto rigged but I think it's okay um, this brings up my little editor with uh, my startup script just says hello idle for like sanity checking to make sure that I know that the script has run then it imports inspect and defines this little C function which all it does is print and I don't actually need the parentheses but I guess it doesn't matter print inspect.get source of whatever object you get it. and so it's really nice to have that run every time you get into your Python environment because then whatever functions you're importing from other uh, modules you can just immediately see them you know so I we can go back to URL lib2 and uh, one one function that we might want to see about uh, it's one we can use a little later URL open that's a function oh sorry see so so I forgot to say URL lib2 dot URL open it's the whole hierarchical naming system now just very quickly if you want to get situated this way with the C function I'll let you see my idle.bat all it does is call um, idle.pyw that's a Python script the W means it it uses the uh, tickle GUI um, the dash S means run the startup script which actually um, if I go into my control panel to system advanced environment variables I have an idle startup variable which I've set to be this Python script and that is exactly the script that I showed you before this is idle startup dot py so if you define that if you define this environment variable and then if you make sure that you run idle using the dash s then you're going to be able to uh, have a startup script that you can define in that way. Thank you.